last place, I'm going to put the pot one team. And call me crazy, but I'm going to be putting the champions at last place. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on the Football Fanatic channel and today is the day. The Champions League is back, group stages are back, which can only mean one thing, predictions. We're going to be going through each group's top two teams, I believe, will advance into the knockout rounds. The team I predict to go down to the Europa League was the team I predict to go out of Europe as a whole. We're also going to be predicting the player of the group, the top scorer of each group, as well as the highlights of the group, the player to look out for, the team to look out for, or the fixture to look out for. So, without further ado, Let's get right into it. So we kick things off in the crazy group that is Group A, what is undoubtedly this year's group of death. I mean, the teams in front of me, you have Manchester City, Leipzig, PSG and Club Rouge, all very big profiles in their respective countries, in their respective leagues. Well, for me, PSG dominate this group. I think with the transfer window they've had, the players they've brought in, natural born winners in the likes of uh, Ashraf Hakimi, Lionel Messi, as well as Sergio Ramos, I don't think there's any doubt PSG win this group. The games against Manchester City will be tough, but in the end, I think they will edge it. I think for me, the standings of this group will be PSG at number one, Manchester City at number two, Leipzig dropping to the Europa League, and I don't think there's any doubt Club Rouge is the weakest team on this table. Hence why I think they'll exit Europe this season fairly early. Next, we go to the individual accolades of this group. For me, Lionel Messi has to be player of the group. He's the most anticipated player of this season Champions League. Everyone can't wait to see what Messi will do for PSG. Maybe finally bring them that European Cup that they've desired for so many years in their club's history. But that doesn't necessarily mean he'll be scoring all the goals. I think Kylian Mbappe will be the top scorer of this group and potentially the top scorer of the entire tournament. I mean, this guy seems to score every single game. He's a goal machine and a big game player. I mean, we've seen it so many times against Bayern Munich last season, against uh, Barcelona last season, against even the likes of Germany in the Euros. He dropped an amazing performance then. France didn't have the best Euros, but Mbappe was still very impressive. The highlight of this group for me and for many people has to be El Plastico. The team's who are definitely the richest teams in the world right now. El Plastico, PSG against Manchester City. It will be a tight game. I think PSG will probably win it by one goal margin or maybe by two goal margin, but PSG are the strongest side for me in Group A. Now, moving on, we go to Group B and what a group this is. If you look at this group club by club, it has gone really under the radar, but it was the most interesting thing for me is the fact that this group has a lot of bad blood between each side and Liverpool. Porto, Liverpool, I mean, recent history, Liverpool have been a thorn in the Porto side. Liverpool have been destroying Porto every single season. They seem to play against each other. The trio of Salah, Firmino and Mane have been dominating. I believe it's 20 goals in six games, something crazy like that, that they've played against Porto and they've just demolished them every single season that they're asked to do so. Porto do still have some good players. I mean, they have the likes of Pepe, that's about it but in the end i still think liverpool will demolish porto again and they'll finish last place now the top three for me it's going to be quite hard to distinguish between these sides liverpool and atleti do have their bad blood as well atleti knocking them out two seasons ago in that season that Bayern munich won it 2020 but also ac milan back in the champions league back for the istanbul memories back for the 2007 memories these two sides are going to go head to head yet again after so many years, I mean, AC Milan has just been sad to see how out of it they have been, how small they've been. You would forget that they've won seven UCLs and how big of a club they are with the likes of Ronaldinho, Pirlo, Beckham, the legends that they've had, just to name a few. Maldini as well. It's finally good to see them back in the Champions League. But will that remain for quite a while? I don't think so, because for me, the standings are going to be Liverpool, Atletico Madrid, AC Milan, FC Porto. And that's just going to be the way it is. I think it's almost guaranteed AC Milan are going to go back to the Europa League. Almost guaranteed Porto will be last place. And Liverpool and Atleti, they're veterans of the Champions League now. There's no doubt that they're probably going to go far in the competition itself, let alone the group stage. But moving on to personal accolades for me, Mo Salah is definitely, 
definitely up there with one of the best players in the world right now he is so threatening he has scored already three goals i believe it is in the premier league this season and that's why i've given him player of the group and top scorer i think he will probably finish with around seven or six goals in the group stage but the highlight of the group is also liverpool related and liverpool legend related Luis Suarez returning to Anfield is going to be quite the spectacle, quite box office, quite emotional for Anfield and Luis Suarez. Obviously, he had the best years of his career at Barcelona, but he also had some incredible years at Liverpool. In that season, he won the Golden Boot and broke the record for the most goals that Cristiano Ronaldo previously held. So, yeah, that's going to be my review of Group B. Let's get into Group C. So, what an interesting group we have in front of us right here. I think that there's not much to say based off background knowledge about the team performances on the pitch but there's a really big thing i want to speak about in this group and i'm gonna skip through this i'm gonna get to the ranking straight away i'm gonna go dortmund sporting ajax and besiktas ajax back in the europa league sporting second which might surprise a lot of people but they are the portuguese champions and i think with the young talent they have they can go far in this tournament but now going to what i want to speak about the most special thing about this is the big chance that Haaland has to take his career to the next level. I think he's going to go on the goal fest. He's a goal machine already. And with the teams he's playing against here, I think he's only going to maximize that. I think he'll be the player of the group, the top scorer. But the highlight of the group is something very interesting. I've, I've had it written down here as the peak of football, Dortmund against Besiktas. But I want to add in Ajax and Sporting to that because the entire group are very fan-backed, ultra fan-backed. Uh, the atmosphere is crazy and these four teams produce the loudest decibels in a football pitch. I mean, the atmosphere for these young players is going to be difficult. I want to see how likes of Haaland, Sancho, Sancho, Jude Bellingham, Gio Reyna, uh, in Sporting, you have the likes of Pedro Gonçalves, you have the likes of uh, Paina, Besiktas, I obviously don't know much about. And obviously Ajax are world renowned for their young talents like Anthony, like David Neres. But anyway... It's going to be crazy to see the atmosphere in every single game. You have four teams who have fans who are football crazy. But for me, I still think Dortmund are going to breeze through this. I think Sporting will probably have a tough time. I think they'll just qualify. It's between them and Ajax. I wouldn't be surprised if Ajax finish uh, second. But I do think Besiktas do finish at last. So yeah, that's going to be my review for Group C. Moving on to Group D. Now it's time to talk about the biggest club in the world in Group D and I've titled it as Deja Vu because if you haven't seen it already, Real Madrid are in the group again with Inter Milan and Shakhtar only missing Borussia Dortmund, uh, sorry Borussia Mönchengladbach to replicate the group last season and they've actually been replaced by a Moldovian side debutants in the Champions League, the first ever UCL for this Moldovian side, Sheriff FC, who I actually like the look of, I actually think I, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't even finish. I think they'll actually make it to the Europa League, which brings me on to my point for the standings. But just before we get into that, I just want to talk about Real Madrid's Champions League dominance. They are the most decorated club in the competition. And as we know, Real Madrid have actually not gone to the final since they've lost Cristiano Ronaldo. And it's definitely been a downfall since they've lost a player like that. When you lose a legend like that, you're definitely going to have some missing holes, which has actually been filled right now. Well, not filled, but is being filled by Vinicius Jr., a young player who can maybe even replicate what 20% of Cristiano Ronaldo did in his career for Real Madrid. I mean, that would be brilliant for the young star to replicate what Cristiano Ronaldo did. At least 20% would just be perfect for Real Madrid fans. Vinicius has actually had a brilliant start to the season. I believe he scored four goals in three games I believe I'm right saying that and he's top scorer of La Liga a great player suddenly he's found his shooting boots actually his most his highest scoring season for Real Madrid has come in four games which is just crazy to see he's the most on-form youngster in the world right now but we're gonna get into the group stage rankings I'm gonna go for Real Madrid Inter Milan the team was lost Lukaku but still very solid obviously losing that Champions League commitment maybe made it easier for them to win the Serie A last season but I still think they will probably get second place again Sheriff is very very slept on I think they are very underestimated I'm not Moldovian or anything but from what I've seen in the playoffs 
They are very good. They knocked out the likes of Dynamo Zagreb, who actually beat Tottenham Hotspurs like it was nothing. So we'll have to see how it goes. I think Shakhtar will finish last. And I want to get into now the um, personal accolades. For me, I think player of the group will be Vinicius Jr. And that's not based off goals. I think that's based off goals, assists, dribbles completed. I mean, he's just a joy to watch. Suddenly, he's found his performance. He's found his style. He's found his weight. He's finally here. He's finally arrived as one of the best youngsters in the world. And I can't wait to see more of him. Top scorer for me has to be Big Benz. I mean, this guy is scoring so many goals every single season he's real madrid's main man since they lost cristiano ronaldo gareth bale's obviously back in the side but benzema is levels above any other player in that real madrid squad right now and is probably the best striker in the world alongside the likes of Lewandowski and uh, cristiano ronaldo so that for me are the, those for me are the two players who i think are really going to be i think that they need to be watched out for in the champions league not only for the group but for the rest of the tournament but the highlight of the group is the underdog story that is Sheriff. I think that everyone is going to be so impressed and surprised by how good they are. I've seen them in the playoffs. They have destroyed teams who have beaten Premier League sides. Premier League sides. So we'll just have to see how it goes and see if this fairy tale can increase. Anything can happen. Since Leicester won the league, I've just been a firm believer in anything can happen, especially in football. So we'll have to see how they go. But that was a pretty, that was a pretty fast review of... Uh, Group D and I think it was quite informative. I think it's fair to say Real Madrid are probably going to be gunning for that Champions League final position. They are improving every single year and finally at that stage with Carlo and Ancelotti and also the signing of Camavinga who has been very impressive on his debut scoring goal. Um, I think Real Madrid are back to that rebuilding process to get back to that European dominance that they previously had. So yeah, anyway, let's move on to Group E.